a subscriber asked me to do something on self-sabotage and how we sabotage our own success. And often if people are recovering from depression, anxiety, or trying to lose weight, or trying to get fit, or trying to be happier, or trying to meditate, or whatever the goal you set, often what happens is we don't achieve it. And that can be down to poor planning or not goal setting. There are things we can easily resolve. But there's something much deeper that can uh, affect our progress in improving our health in whichever direction you want to take it. And that's the concept of self-sabotage. And I'm here today with my whiteboard to see if this works to help you explain to you some of these concepts. And you're probably familiar with the concept of iceberg. Imagine this is the sea level here. And uh, we only see what's above the water level. We think that's the iceberg. The actual fact we know that the iceberg is much bigger than what we see and it's the part that's under the water that is the huge dominant part of the iceberg. The part that's above the surface is our awareness, our consciousness, what we're conscious of and what's under the surface is the unconscious um, and the unconscious is the area that we're not aware of. Often what happens is there can be a conflict between the conscious and the unconscious and this is where self-sabotage can be played out because the conscious is what I want. I want to lose weight. That's a conscious decision. I'm aware that maybe my weight is affecting my health or I want to be fitter. And so I set a goal and I, I work towards that goal, but maybe a couple of weeks into my training or into my dieting or whatever, I, I, I stop. What happens? You know, I want, I want to lose weight, but suddenly I stop my progress, I stop my goals, I stop my behaviours towards losing weight. And there's something that's happening within us that uh, prevents us, stops us and tricks us, traps us uh, into a process where we, we stop. And this is referred to self-sabotage. We sabotage ourselves. We become our own enemy. And the conflict is because up here we're aware of who we are. This is the ideal self. I want to lose weight, I want to look a certain way, I want to be a certain weight. This is the, we have a vision here of the ideal self. You know, it's the ego. In psychology it's referred to as the ego. This is how I see myself. Um, whereas in actual fact, the unconscious part of ourselves is sometimes referred to the hidden self. It's the self that I'm not aware of. And this hidden self is often what drives our real behaviours. The hidden self can stop us achieving something on the conscious level that we want we want to achieve. So obviously we need to become more aware of what is, who is my hidden self? How do I understand my hidden self? And how do I get to know it? How do I get to know the consciousness? I'll talk about that a little bit later. So just to explain again some of the things. So up here in the conscious self, we, we have a very much dominated by thinking and thoughts. It's the cognitive rational self. Um, it's, it's who I say I am. It's who I become. It's who I tell others I am. It's the story I tell myself. We often have this self-talk, uh, and sometimes that self-talk can be negative. So it's part of who I am. I have a negative self-talk, or I have a positive self-thinking going on. And it's, so the, the conscious self is dominated by thinking, whereas the unconscious self is dominated by desires. The desires are often hidden. And because we live in a, what's a world that's biased towards rational, and cognitive thinking, that what we think, Descartes said, I think, therefore I am. So thinking became uh, the dominant way to describe who we are. It became the dominant experience of who we are. But the reality is that we're more than a thinking being, we're a feeling being, we're a spiritual being, we're an energetic being, we're a physical being. And a lot of that has been suppressed because of religion, and society's attempts to, to control people, uh, to put people into boxes and to label people, whether it be the mad and the bad, or whether it be the good and the hardworking, and so on. So society has, over thousands of years, evolved to such a way that we, we suppress darkness, you know, desires, sex, sex and sexuality is something that there's still a lot of taboo about. Body is still very taboo, the Christian, religion, uh, you know, in some ways uh, saw the body as bad, a source of a sin. So uh, in order to become good, we had to behave good and we told ourselves we were good and we developed a ideal self. Now the conflict between 
the conscious self and the unconscious self is, is in a conflict to present to the world up here who we are. It's that Instagram self. This is the ideal self. This is who I want people to see. But in actual fact, uh, this, is, this is really a bigger part of who I am, who I don't see myself. And often other people see it. And sometimes that's referred to as the, as the shadow. The shadow is the part of ourselves that we don't see. And until we get to know the shadow, the part of myself that I'm not aware of, and the unconscious and hidden self, then I'm going to be lacking awareness. And it's only through awareness can we have more control of, of who we are and what we want and how we're going to achieve it. On, on the surface again, we have, we present this um, acceptable self and it's a comfort zone that we, we become to exist and live within. So the conscious self, we're in this comfort zone. And to change our behavior, uh, to, to become fit, we need to go through pain, we need to suffer, we need to uh, have discipline, we need to make effort um, to overcome depression. There's a lot we need to let go and a lot we need to embrace, which is to embrace uh, the darker self, which is the hidden self. It's hidden because it's darker. It's less acceptable. You know, I could be angry. Anger is an emotion that's often suppressed because society doesn't like anger because it associates anger with behavior that is a result of people being angry. But the emotion anger is a good, a good emotion because it's an expression uh, of what we're feeling in a situation that we need to feel alert and on the defensive. But it's, anger gets a very bad reputation because a lot of people act out their anger and it's the behavior that we, we condemn, you know, aggression or violence as a result of feeling anger. So a lot of the darker uh, parts of who we are, whether it be around our sexuality, around feeling uh, anger and rage and shame, uh, is, is suppressed. Self-hate is another aspect of the part that we might want to hide. So it's all down here, whereas up here we present a, an acceptable self to the world of which we're comfortable with. And what happens with self-sabotage then is that we, we always, if we're not aware of this, we return to the comfort zone, the comfort zone. So even being overweight can be a comfort. I've learned to be overweight because eating, for example, is is a way of uh, dealing with emotions and pain and, and social issues. And being overweight has been my survival. It has protected me. It's something that I'm familiar with. It's my comfort zone. And losing weight is outside of my comfort zone. Losing weight will awaken the unconscious emotions because that's what happens. We're no longer sedating ourselves with food. We're no longer sedating our emotions. We're no longer sedating pain, full emotions with food. And when we stop sedating ourselves, medicating ourselves with food, we allow these emotions to, to awaken. So we, we become, we move into the unconscious self and we get to know that self, but sometimes it's overbearing, it's too strong. It tricks us, traps us and trips us up along the way and that's the self-sabotage. So, um, that, yeah, so it's numbing awareness. Uh, the conscious self is in a constant process of numbing awareness. We have behaviors and thought patterns that constantly seek to numb, numb the, the deeper awareness. Because society uh, is, the capitalist society or the, the dominant society we live in is much more about comfort. It doesn't really want you to feel pain. Uh, it will sell you products, it will sell you food, it will sell you medications, etc. Our, our modern society is not a society that's comfortable with pain. Uh, hence we have an opiate oid problem in, in Ireland and all over the world, particularly in the United States, and it's be people's attempts to self-medicate because society doesn't accept you know, the loss that people have experienced through the economic crash, uh, loss of security, loss of jobs, loss of self-esteem and confidence, uh, loss in relationships, loss of health. There's so many losses that people experience that society doesn't allow us to deal with loss and so it's all suppressed and people don't know how to cope with it so they, they cope with it through drugs, through alcohol, through food, through behaviours and it's all again suppressed and from generation to generation we carry this unconsciousness so Ireland for example has a consciousness and an unconsciousness and it's you know as, as a nation that are very good at you know expressing our imagination through songs and writing and poetry and arts 
and we've uh, we've found a way to tap into this deeper um, stream of consciousness is what uh, James Joyce did in his writing um, and allowed it to, to bubble up to the surface through art and through beautiful writings and songs however um, we also suffer you know we're, we we have our history of suffering and we we still are connected to that suffering and we need to to deal with that as a nation but as as individuals how then do we how then do we arrest how do we stop this process of self-sabotaging so just in summary if uh, if we accept that there's a conscious self of which i'm going to plan i want to lose weight for example i'm going to lose 10 pounds that's what i want to do i set goals and i go about doing it but along the way I find I can't, it's too painful, it's too difficult, it's too hard to give up bread, it's too hard to give up sugar, it's too hard to give up whatever, chocolate. Um, that then is the conflict. So in order to really achieve our goals, we've got to lean into whatever pain we have. We can't be leaning out of it, medicating. We've got to lean in and accept, uh, move into the consciousness. And the only way really to, to do that is, um, so this is my advice for anyone who has probably everybody experiences this, including myself, and I'm on this journey myself. Um, what are the things that helps us increase awareness of our own hidden self, the feeling self, and, and the, the darker self is, is meditation. Because meditation is stopping, stopping thinking. You can not meditate and think at the same time. Well, you probably can, but you know, what meditation is trying to do is give the brain a rest, give the thinking a rest, and just be, just sit in consciousness. So meditation is a great way to increase awareness around who I am. This is who I am. I'm all of this. I'm all of this. I'm not just this. This is not who I am. This is the conscious self, but I am all of this self. So meditation is a journey into that. And why people find meditation so difficult is because all of this stuff comes up. The dark stuff, the shit, the, the negative self-hate, the loading, all the negative. We don't want to feel these things, think these things, because they're not acceptable in society. So we have to suppress them. But meditation is a journey into awareness. The other thing is mindfulness. I have a video on uh, Kabat-Zinn's seven principles of mindfulness. Mindfulness ultimately is uh, a deepening awareness, a consciousness, and it's driven by principles of gratitude and focusing on the positive. There are two things that I, I work on a lot myself that I found helpful. So instead of focusing on the negative, on the journey towards losing weight, we focus on the positive. We focus on what we're doing today. And by being grateful for what we can achieve, we can overcome the, the power of the unconscious. Uh, we don't really celebrate too much the ego. We don't enjoy too much, you know, I've lost two pounds, but if you enjoy that too much, you start celebrating it, and then you're not, you know, ready for the next step. So um, mindfulness is another way to deepen your self-awareness. And the only way to stop the self-sabotage is to deepen awareness, self-awareness, into your own unconscious. It's not, it's not a rational journey, because this is pretty rational down here. This is all feeling self. That's why it's hard to navigate. But you got to go in there, you got to close your eyes. The only way to do this journey is in the dark. Close your eyes. You can't think your way out of this. You can't rationalize your way out of this. You can't go to therapy for 10 years and talk about it. If, if therapy helps you feel great, but if it's going to think and rationalize it, it's not going to work. The other path you need to be on is a journey of, of self-awareness. Self-awareness can be helped by counseling, by therapy, but also by friends. Um, by journaling and by reading, becoming more aware, by doing courses, doing yoga, um, whatever it helps you to become more aware of who you are. Because it's who you are is going to drive your behaviours. Uh, and that's what's going to stop the self-sabotage. If you're not willing to get to know who you are, then you're always going to have part of yourself, that hidden dark self, uh, that's going to be wearing those masks that you don't want to get out into the, into the light and uh, they're going to drive your behavior and drive you. So I hope this helped. I'm not sure if it's, if it's helped. I'd love to know what you think in the comments. Um, let me know your experience of self-sabotage, if you found this helpful, and uh, let me know there, and I look forward to getting back to you. Um, so that's it for today. Tom O'Brien, Mental Health Herbalist. Herbalist. Uh, focusing on mental health issues and as I said I'm doing this video today for a subscriber and helping people who come to me for herbal medicine for mental health issues mainly and, and other issues but also it's to um, 
you know, you, herbs are great and foods are great, but you all have to help, try and help people change their behaviours. And that's what sometimes people struggle with. And I hope this video has helped you. And I'll see you in a video very soon. Take care. Bye-bye.